And if she's laying all the way over there against that wall, oh my gosh, have you ever seen a brood pattern like that before? That's a David Burns queen. Gosh. I don't know what to say. That's all cat brood. It's just amazing. I don't want to keep it out too long in the shade. It needs to stay 92 to degrees as say pupate. So um, my inspection for all intents and purposes is over. Hey everybody, David Burns, EAS Certified Master Beekeeper, back with you for another video on beekeeping. I'm on a roll making videos. I've been making one almost every day for you. Wow, that's been fun. Um, I'm going to show you today how to make a hive inspection, how to make a fast hive inspection. Some of you are frustrated that it's taking so long to find the queen or to figure out if your hive is okay. Boom! We're going to open up a hive. I'm going to show you how fast you can inspect a hive and get out of there and have confidence that everything is okay. And uh, but also today, the hive that we put the queen back into over here, some of you were a little... Um, concerned that uh, we dropped the queen in and they kind of just woo, got excited about her. I use the word excited in the video. They're excited to see her. And I think some of you are wondering, as I am, um, is she okay? And, you know, she was out of the hive for 18 hours. It'd be a little experiment again on if you pull a queen out for 18 hours and put her back in, so I'm wondering if something changes, like the absence of the pheromones for 18 hours. Do they just totally forget about the pheromones and now they won't accept even their queen because they don't remember her pheromones anymore? I, so what we're gonna do uh, in addition, we're gonna do two things today. In addition to showing you how to inspect a hive and inspect it quickly, we're gonna drop back in this hive and we're gonna take a look and make sure the queen's okay. All right, but before we do all of that, I'm gonna have to do a little morning routine with you. I've gotta have a cup of coffee first. So um, if you don't want to have a cup of coffee with me and just talk as a friend, that's okay. Maybe we're not friends yet. <laughs> and you can just jump ahead to this number right here. This, this number tells you how far in the video to advance so you can get started in the hive. But we're not gonna do that until I have a cup of coffee and we chat a little bit. Let's get started. So what I start out with, I wanted to show you, um, I'm gonna show you how I make my coffee beans. I start with green beans, green coffee beans, unroasted. I roast them. Um, and then I have a French press. If, you've, if you're not familiar with the French press, it is the only way to go and making really good tasting coffee. Of course, I choose the mug of the day, and today I'm choosing uh, a coffee mug that I got when I spoke in at the bee conference, the state bee conference in Utah. I spoke there, I think it was back in February, just before COVID-19 shut us all down. And so I'm gonna uh, honor my uh, connection with the Utah state beekeepers and enjoy uh, a mug. And then I've got the grinder here, and I'm gonna show you how I grind my beans every morning. So what I have here is just a teaspoon of honey. I always like to add uh, a very healthy teaspoon of honey to my coffee. And these are the green beans, and these are the roasted beans. And uh, so here's how I roast uh, my beans. I have a roaster, and I just uh, I have it out on my back porch. It's a little noisy. I mean, I used to have it in my kitchen, but um, I put it on the back porch because it's a little noisy while it's roasting. It takes about 20, 20 minutes for my green unroasted coffee beans to be roasted to about the first pop. That's when I like it the best. Again, if you've never had a chance to experience uh, roasting your own coffee, look at that. Uh, these coffee beans are really good. They smell so good when they're green like this. And uh, that's what unroasted coffee beans look like. I usually roast enough beans to last me a few days. I don't like to let them sit too long. And then I'll, uh, I'll roast a new batch, but that's what they look like once you roast them. And then this is a grinder. So let's get started on the grinding of the coffee beans. Here's the roasted beans that are inside the grinding machine. 
I have a little setting. It's too low. I need, it needs to be about right, right there. I, I like my coffee strong. Uh, this setting tells um, the grinder how large to make the grinds. And if you make them too small, it's strong. If you make them too big, it's not as strong. So you can adjust that. It's a neat little thing. And it just uh, grinds them. They fall through here into the canister. So let's, let's grind some coffee beans. Ready? All right, look, let's see what they look like. Mmm, it smells so good. And then I just dump them in my French press. All right. Then we've got to add hot water. And uh, now I like to stir it with a wooden spoon. Uh, just kind of stir all the hot water. And now we're going to let it sit about three to five minutes. And then once it's stirred, I just uh, put my French press. This is a little strainer on the French press. And so I just stick that in there like this until it touches the water, drop the lid, wait five minutes. Okay, I think our coffee is ready in the French press. Uh, I'm gonna take my honey from my spoon and I love honey in my coffee. If you've never had honey in your coffee, you've gotta do that because it tastes so good. I think it's really healthy for you. I have no idea if that's true or not. Actually, I do. Actually, I spoke at a conference with Mae Barabom from the University of Illinois, and I heard her speak about her work with honey in hot tea. And she said that in her um, experimenting around and researching it, that honey and hot coffee can lower cholesterol. And so that was exciting. I, I don't, I'm not doing it for medicinal purposes. I'm doing it, to be honest with you, for the flavor, <laughs> okay? I love the flavor um, of honey in my coffee. Um, so let's pour it from the French press and uh, you'll get to see what it looks like. Unfortunately, you're not gonna get to taste it to see what it tastes like. What you do with the French press is once it's set, um, the coffee grinds are uh, in the water and so the water becomes more coffee flavored from the grinds, coffee grinds that are in there. We push this down, which is pushing the screen down and it pushes all the grinds, coffee grounds down in here. And then we're able to pour it and just watch the beautiful coffee come out you see that oh my gosh that oh wow i mean that is just like the color of that wow oh, i i love my coffee in the morning if i don't have coffee in the morning i'm not i'm not addicted to caffeine now there's a squirrel just walking around up there i'm not like addicted to caffeine i can go without it and not get a headache or anything and the funny thing is all my life, I've been able to, uh, medicine affects me differently, like the opposite. Like when I was little, if I had a lot of caffeine and it's still this way today, I get really tired and sleepy. It doesn't energize me, <laughs> kind of the opposite. Uh, so I love my coffee. Sometimes I drink it before I go to bed, <laughs> uh, but I love it in the morning. I, I have one cup every day. Now, uh, this will make, my French press will make about three cups. And my wife usually has one cup as well. She likes to add rum chata <laughs> to her coffee every morning. So uh, uh, if it's a bad day, she adds more rum chata. <laughs> I don't know, no, I'm, I'm kidding. But she likes the rum chata in coffee. I do too. I, I think that is a wonderful flavor. Um, but I, I also like uh, plain coffee with just a little honey in it. So stirring it up like this is really good. But anyway, I make about three cups of coffee in my French press. I drink one cup and then I 
start doing things with my cup of coffee. I'll walk around and piddle and putter. And what happens is I'll leave it somewhere. I'll put it down somewhere and, you know, have to go get a tool or go answer a phone call or something. But then I forget where I put my cup of coffee for a few hours. And then when I find it, it's like finding a pot of gold. I'm like, oh, there's my cup of coffee. It's still got some in it. Woo! And I enjoy it. The, the bad news is sometimes I find my cup of coffee and it's empty. And I'm like, oh, I really wanted more. And that's when I go back to the French press and I pour another cup of coffee. But usually my day becomes, um, I, I become so active during the day that I don't make it back to the second cup, to be honest with you. The funny thing is, though, sometimes in the afternoon, I will feel like a cup of coffee and the French press may still have a cup in it. And so I'll pour another cup of coffee in the afternoon. Um, sometimes I add ice and I have cold coffee. But other times I, I make another cup like this and I zap it in the microwave for a minute or two. And so let me see what this tastes like. It's really hot. That's why I'm uh, killing a little bit of time. I'm not sure of the temperature of my Culligan dispenser on hot water. Um, I'm going to guess around 180, 190. Uh, and that's a good that's a good temperature to make coffee with. Oh, perfect. A perfect cup of coffee with a perfect audience and a perfect day and a perfect book to tell you about. I um, I'm telling you about this book. I, I don't I'm not doing it to make money. Uh, believe me, <laughs> but I'm telling you about this book because I'm really proud of the work that Sherry and I did to help beekeepers out. And it helps us if you order this book, if you do a pre-order on Amazon. And we're, it's all about helping people out, I think. You know, we live in a strange world where there's so much um, bitterness and hostility. It's, it's sad. And I see no reason why, as humans, we can't get along better. And we can't help each other out. I always get a good feeling when I help people out. Don't you? I, don't, I never feel good about hurting people. And uh, I think that's one of the things about our bee business that why people like us is because we will always help you out. We'll always try to bend over backwards to go the extra mile. And that's all about helping people out. Um, I think the book is great because I wrote it and I think the content really serves the beekeeping community really well. Um, so if you want to pre-order it, gosh, I think it's only... You know, I don't know the price. I think it's 15 bucks. Um, maybe it's less than that. I don't know. But um, it's, it, it would be a nice gesture if you could pre-order it. Because what happens when you pre-order it, it excites my publishers. My publishing company called me the other day and said, Wow, your book is really selling well on pre-orders. And that made me feel good. And that's because of you. You're pre-ordering the book. So... I'll put a link down below in the description of this video on how you can pre-order the book. Sometimes it seems like I'm making a lot of sales pitches on my YouTube videos, and certainly I may be, because this is the only thing I do to make a living, and I enjoy not having to go to work, at, and I can just make videos in the hives, I can teach classes, I can work on online courses and all, and so by... Um, me telling you about the things that we offer and you taking advantage of them, it helps me live a life where I can help you. I, that's so cool if you think about that for a minute. Um, so uh, two other ways that you can help me out and, uh, and, and I will help you in return is that I have a B Team 6 mentoring ship program. And so I mentor about 200 plus people around the country in beekeeping. They actually call me up on my cell phone. David, I'm in a what? Well, I'm in a bind. I'm out in the bee yard. This is going on. What is it? What do I do? And I talk to them on the cell phone and I say, can you send me a picture? I want to see that up close. Oh, I see. That's this. That's that. Don't worry about it. Or, oh, you need to do something. And so other people email me. They text me on my phone. So it's not that much money. It's less than five dollars a week and it's probably less than a cup of coffee at a, at a fancy coffee place 
And uh, so, you know, for $5 a week or less than $5 a week, you can become a part of B Team 6. We can talk. We, you, can, you can access me. Uh, no, I don't have a secretary that answers the phone first. I answer the phone and I say, hey, Bob, hey, Sally, what's up? And you ask me your question. It's really cool. The other things that I do to help beekeepers out that helps me uh, is that I have online beekeeping courses. And again, some of you have been asking me in the comments, where do I find these online beekeeping courses at? And I'll put a description and uh, down below in this video, but it's really good. I, it's me talking to you like we're talking right now, but it's also videos of going into the hive. It's more than what you see in these public videos uh, because uh, public videos are more for short entertaining uh, segments of beekeeping, whereas the classes are more thorough and uh, it, it takes more commitment to watch those because it's more about bee anatomy and hive anatomy and uh, how to manage your bees from start to finish. I can't do that in a YouTube video. It'd be out, it'd be six hours. <laughs> so the ultimate beekeeping course that I put together, so many people have enjoyed that. And we give a certificate of completion when you send back your paperwork showing that you filled in the blanks. Um, a B Team 6 member sent me a picture of her wall and she had like six or seven certificates of classes that she had taken uh, from me and she had them framed on her wall. It was beautiful. And I, I want to tell you about that because in my life, I've succeeded in, in many things, um, and, but I've only succeeded because of very, very hard work. Uh, painful, uh, failure, pick myself back up, try it again kind of thing. And I think when you um, succeed at something, uh, no matter how small it is, it gives you encouragement and energy and focus to try something just a little bit bigger than that. And so when people take one of my beekeeping classes and they learn about biology and botany and science, um, then they are awarded a certificate. Uh, I, I know it seems maybe a little silly to some people to get a certificate for you know, taking a class, but when you show that you get a certificate of completion and you hold it in your hands that I did this, I learned, uh, life is all about learning, and then it makes you feel good to get awarded for learning. And when you complete the task, you're able to take on something else. And I've done that a lot in my life. I've accomplished many things uh, in a, on a small level. And then I, I just kept graduating up thinking, I can do this, I can do this. And so my dad was uh, just a awesome leader. He has since passed, but uh, my dad was always one who would constantly say to me, he was a very positive, energetic individual. And he would always say to me, David, nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. And uh, I faced some real impossible tasks before. And uh, I'm sure some of them I gave up because I'm human. But many of them, I kept doing it. I kept falling down and getting up until I did it. And it's not so much that you do something and you finally are awarded the final outcome, like a certificate, a medal, a trophy, uh, you know, something like that. But it's a process. It's what you learn during this process. Um, I can't stress that enough. Life is about going th every day through challenges, hardships, joys, um, setbacks, successes, but that's life. And whether you get a certificate or not, whether you become a master beekeeper or not, whether you write a book or not, it doesn't really matter. Uh, it, what matters is this process of life that happens from the minute you start something and, the, and all the time between that until you finish it, whether you fail or succeed. You really don't fail any time that you go through life learning. And so I'm excited about that. I, I love to learn. I love to accomplish things that are way beyond my current skill set because it challenges me to step outside my comfort zone 
and do something that seems overwhelming at the time. Um, and I just try to accomplish things that are too big for me by asking people to help me that are more knowledgeable than I am. Hey, I need information. I can't figure this out. What is this? How does this work? Um, it's really good. And so I feel like I'm a part of that in your life. I feel like I'm giving you tips on beekeeping, advancing you. Um, and I do want to be your beekeeping mentor. So, you know, consider taking a class with me, be, be part of Bee Team 6, where you can call and ask me and talk to me about stuff. And um, that's going to be cool. I really appreciate that. Well, this is a good talk. <laughs> Again, uh, I know that you had the option to blow past this little uh, talk of encouragement to you and just watch the beekeeping video. That's fine. Uh, I understand that. Um, but I, I'm glad you sat down with me this morning and had a cup of coffee with me. In fact, we might do this more. Uh, inside of here are some other cool things to tell you <laughs> eventually that may come out. And so we may just sit down and have another little talk again. All right. Well, I think I'm going to finish off this cup of coffee. And then we're going to jump in that hive and see if the queen's okay. And then I want to show you how to do a quick hive inspection. Boy, that's good. All right, well, let's get started. Let's uh, find the queen and let's reassure everybody that she's okay. Or, or we learn that, boy, you shouldn't take a queen out for 18 hours and just plop her back in. That doesn't go well. Let's find out what works. I will say, you know how sometimes we say that bees are louder when they are queenless? These bees sounded loud when I smoked them. All right, so we're hoping that the queen is in here. And um, I'll lift this frame up and see what we have here. Now, you need to help me find the queen, obviously, although I do have my glasses on. Calm down, everybody. I can see today. <laughs> I'm in the shade. It's a little tough to see. Mm, look at those wings flap. I don't see the queen. Do you see her? Uh, nothing yet. I see some queen cells. That's not a good sign. Oh, I see her. Woohoo! <laughs> Do you see her? Keep looking, you'll see her. Right there. Right in front of the camera. Walking down. You're going to make me put an arrow in there? <laughs> She's right on that board. See her walking across the bottom? Long. Look how long she is. Golly, that's a great queen. She's okay. All right. Everything is good in the world. Wow. Beautiful queen. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. All right. So, what are we going to do now? I think I ought to... Hmm. Oh, uh, you know what? I want to show you the brood. I want to show you her brood pattern is awesome. This queen is such a laying queen. So prolific. Let me show you. Let me see. I think there's a frame over here. Yeah. 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 Oh, uh, most of this has emerged. Oh, about you can see over here. Look at that. They're emerging in the middle, but you can see her brood pattern. Let me pull up another one. You've got to see this queen in action. Look at that capped over brood. Whoa! Isn't that awesome? They're keeping it warm. By the way, somebody left a comment saying that they brush all the bees off of a cap brood uh, frame like this when they take it uh, to another hive. And the reason I don't do that is because, one, I need those bees to keep those pupa alive. And two, I need those bees to strengthen that colony. So I don't like brushing those off and then making all my bees in the weak colony try to keep all that, uh, all those bees that are pupating uh, 92 degrees. That's too stressful. And so I just take bees and all. All right. Well, that's good. Everything is good with this. Finally, we can put this uh, to rest that both queens are okay. And uh, I hope you enjoyed me going back 
following up on your comments that, uh, wow, they were they were kind of excited when you dropped the queen back in. They think she's okay, you know. All right. And also, it shows that uh, if the hive is a little noisy when you open it, you may think it's queenless, as was this one. But there's a good queen in there. So I'm not sure if we can always say that a noisy hive is a queenless hive. Now, these queen cells, are these are actually cups over here that you can see. Uh, I'm a little worried about those. Did they make those in her absence? Um, so what I'm going to do, I think I'd like to pick this queen up and actually uh, move her off of this frame, and then we'll grab this frame, take it out in the sun where we can see better. So let me pick this queen up. Let's see, here she is. You're probably thinking, David, would you quit with the queen? Leave her alone. <laughs> okay, I got her. <laughs> She's good. Let's just put her over here. Let her walk down between two frames. Uh, she's scooting across. Boom. She's all right. She's safely away from us now. Now let's let me uh, move things around. I want to put this frame uh, in the sun and get closer with my camera, and then let's open these cups up so that we can see what's going on. All right. So I got my frame prop. Uh, I invented this little frame prop mechanism. It's so cool. Look at that. It holds the frame up so you don't smash bees when you're working a frame. And uh, I'm going to just take a look at these queen cups. Queen cells are capped over uh, queen cells. And these are cups because they're open like a teacup. Upside down teacup. Well, there's bees working in there. That's what's making me a little bit nervous that there could be larvae in there. Uh, so let's um, let me see if I can position my camera just right and get my hive tool. I, I want to open this up and see what's in there. Well, gosh, it doesn't look like anything, but why are the bees sticking their heads in there? Let's uh, open this up a little bit. Try not to hurt any bees. Do you see anything? Hey, move out of the way. Excuse us. We're videotaping here. All right, that's annoying. I'm going to brush these little bees aside. I need to see in there. I just really want to know. After 18 hours, are they, do they really start uh, working uh, a little larvae? Gosh, I, I don't see anything. Why? The base of that foundation is so white that I don't know if I can get my camera just right to see. But let's try another one. It doesn't look like there's anything in there. I'm not seeing anything. Are you? No, those are empty. Come on. Nothing going on in there. We're good. I just didn't want them to raise another queen and replace my beautiful queen. Well, uh, some of you ask about the frame prop. This frame prop is so cool. You may be looking at it saying, you know, how did you get it to stand up without falling over? Look at that, how tight it is. Look at that. What, what did I do? Can you guess? Look at that. Aha! I just stuck some propolis under there. <laughs> and that way I can, uh, this is designed to actually go into a hive that you're working between the frames to help you hold the frame up so you don't kill bees. But you can turn it upside down, put some propolis on the bottom, and work it off of a top cover like I just did if you want to take a frame away from the hive. And it's pretty stable. Just smash her down on that propolis like that. Boom. So many of you have asked me, can you show us, you know, how you inspect a hive to see how well a hive is doing? What kind of things are you looking for? All right, my hive inspections are pretty darn quick. So here's a hive that should be doing pretty good, we think. I smoke the entrance a little bit like that. And then I, I get my smoker going like this while I raise the top cover just a little bit. And I want a little bit of smoke to go under that top cover. And then I just set it right back down. This one's kind of glued together with propolis really well. All right, now I'm going to set it back down. I'm going to let it sit like that for just maybe 15 seconds or less. And then I'm going to start opening it up and taking a look at the bees, see what the bees are doing. Now, when I open my top cover up, I like to open it up slowly to let the bees adjust to the bright light. Uh, oh, you know, their hive is becoming very bright with light. I look at that top cover for a small hive beetle. Kind of don't notice any big problems. 
This, this colony is very full, and I can hear them crying out for a super. Hey, David, we're ready for a super. We have honey that we need to store in a honey super. Can you give us a honey super, please? That's what they're saying. You hear them saying that? Well, I, they're not really saying it, but I can tell that's what this colony needs. All right, so... Uh, the inspection for me is going to start on this frame over here. And I'm going to use a J-hook to help me uh, lift up this frame. You can see how the J-hook works. I'm using it a little differently just because there's bees where I normally would put it. And I don't want to kill any bees. Once I get this frame started upward, I can lift it out with my hands. I don't know, whoop, it fell back down. I don't know the temperament too much of this hive. That I haven't really worked it uh, very much at all. And so I'm using a little extra smoke. The key for me is to lift up very slowly like this. See how slow I'm moving? I'm, I'm purposely raising this frame up very slowly. It's not stick, stuck or anything. I'm just liking to go slow. A frame of glistening nectar on both sides so we would say no sign of a queen because a queen doesn't hang out on a frame full of nectar very unlikely let's see if we can look at the next one now these these bees uh, are busy working today so but again we're gonna go in slow motion because I don't have any gloves on I grab my camera so I'm wearing a black shirt nothing that's something you should never do is wear black when you're working bees so that's why I want to go a little more carefully not to excite them another heavy frame means it has a lot of either nectar or honey in it well it's got some brood in the middle very good Nice little brood pattern, and all around the brood, all around the cat brood is larvae and eggs. So we have a very healthy, prolific queen. And if she's laying all the way over there against that wall, oh my gosh, have you ever seen a brood pattern like that before? That's a David Burns queen. Gosh. I don't know what to say. That's all cat brood. It's just amazing. I don't want to keep it out too long in the shade. It needs to stay 92 de degrees as say pupate. So um, my inspection for all intents and purposes is over. I saw eggs. I saw a brood pattern that is fantastic. Any disease probably would have showed up on that brood or in the larvae. I, I would have noticed in the larvae, any European fowl brood, which I didn't see, it all looked great. I would have noticed anything like American fowl brood in that capped over cells would have been perforated. There was nothing there. But I'm going to keep looking since I'm open. The bees are being nice to me. Gosh, I am so done looking. The brood pattern is fantastic. If I look any longer... And there's a big frame of honey here. If I look any longer, I risk um, killing the queen accidentally by carelessly uh, smashing her. So my inspection is over. If, it, if you don't see any eggs, larvae, stuff like that, then you keep going until you do. But since we saw it early, my inspection is done. I'm putting our last frame back in over here of uh, nectar and then I know exactly where I have just harvested a super from another hive a wet super is ready to go on let me get that wet super all right so we're ready to put a super on that we just harvested got all the honey out of that super this is called a wet super and we're giving it back to the bees so they can restore any comb that we may have damaged and then they can simply start adding more nectar uh, to this super got one frame kind of sticking up a little bit there we go it's important to kind of get everything where you want it all right it's good um, some of the some of you may be asking or thinking what about all that extra stuff, David? All that extra comb? 
If you want to take time to get rid of the extra comb, it's a good idea. It allows your either inner cover or top cover uh, to seat better. Um, just don't throw this in the yard. It could attract small hive beetle, you know, a comb with honey on it. You want to keep your bee yard kind of clean. Uh, there's some propolis right there and some propolis here. You can kind of scrape that off, get things cleaned up. And the other thing I want to tell you about, I can see already, and I'll show you more closely in a minute. This wet honey super has honey on the outside. If you leave that there, it could attract robbing. So what we're going to do is put our lid on upside down for just a temporary moment while we go grab a rag so we can clean off the sides of our wet honey super. And again, the reason we're doing this is because bees from other colonies will definitely be attracted to any residue of honey left on this super that you kind of got your sticky hands on while you were processing it in, in your shop or your extracting room. So make sure that you get all drippy honey off of that super when you put it back on or other hives will rob it. Other hives will be attracted to it. Now let me show you another trick. Man, you're only going to learn this from people like me on my YouTube channel. This is crazy what you can learn little tips, right? Look at this. This is the best stuff ever. Honey Bandit. Bees don't like the smell. It's not, you know, bee robber, but I'm going to just spray some on my wet rag. Not much, just a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just rub it around my super like this. And that way, it blocks out any smell of honey that may be left on my super. <laughs> I'm telling you, this, this is overdone, I'm sure. You don't really probably have to do this every time. But I've had colonies robbed out by putting a dripping uh, wet super on, on the outside. So I don't want to do that. All right, so now we're just going to put this back on the top cover. Let's knock these bees off first onto that that we don't really smash any probably got some little bit of honey uh, our stuff on the top of our top cover let's wipe that off good too just to cut down on the chance of bees robbing this brand new wet super push down on it give it a good seal around the edges so make sure it's tight we don't want anybody robbing that wet super Boom! I would say in probably one week they'll have it filled up. We'll come back and take a, take a look. Well, there you go, everybody. Thanks for spending the morning with me. A lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. We learned a lot of things from the beehive. I know it's a little bit longer than normal, but that was coffee time. <laughs> and so that was fun. And I want to encourage you to leave me comments because Sherry and I are thinking about using uh, some merchandise on our YouTube channel, like t-shirts, coffee mugs. We used to uh, offer t-shirts long ago from our store and people love them so much. We haven't done t-shirts for a while. Anyway, let me know in the comments below if you think it's a good idea for us to offer some merchandise uh, for you to buy. Uh, with our logo or something, my face on it, I don't know. But maybe you can uh, let me know whether that's worthwhile or not. If you'd be interested, we might pursue that. Otherwise, please subscribe, click the bell, and I'll see you next time.